today was a fantastic, great, good day, guys. Because what just happened? XRP exploded. What? What was it? About seven to eight percent, guys. Right, and now it's something back, uh, back down again. But there's a reason why I pumped, guys. Why? And maybe in a bit we may talk about the price action of XRP. Why it's better to for it to dump and follow Bitcoin rather to decouple and go up right now because of that black swan scenario, guys, which we talked about. Right? Remember, remember, remember. But the reason why it did pump is because here we go. It has begun, guys. The end is here. From BC Backer. Oh snap! What just happened? Judge re rejects SEC motion to appeal Ripple ruling. Wow, guys! From Johnny Deaton. Yes, I just got the email from the court. Judge Torres has denied the interlocutory appeal request. SEC loses again. It seems like Gary is just pissed off at this point, right? And then he goes on and states this, guys. So everyone played their part, right? XRP holders. We all did something, guys. Everyone is reporting on the matter. Twitter, um, crypto Twitter, especially the XRP community is exploding as we speak, guys. Then we see from Sir Alderodi, the course July 13th ruling was and remains the law of the land. XRP is not a security. Wow, guys, I can't make this stuff up. We just can't. Remember, when we talk about the number 13, guys, you just have to remember from Baba Cuck's Hinman emails dropped on the 13th. Uh, 13th, XRP not a security on 13. SEC appeal denied on 13. Today is it, well, a what day, guys? A 13. Do you guys see how rituals are being are being done as we speak you can't make this stuff up you just can't and people still and people will still sit there lie to your face and say uh baba knows nothing so it's the craziest thing guys right and so let us now go to the documents and read what happened a huge day for the community 100 percent conclusion for the reason stated above the sec's motion for a certification of interlocutory appeal is denied and the SEC's request for a stay is denied as well, guys, as moot. The clerk of court is directed to uh, terminate the motion. Uh, trial in this matter is set to begin on April 23rd, 2024 at 9 a.m. in courtroom, guys. Wow. So the process, the court system does take a while, doesn't it? 100% it seems as. No. The deadline as set forth in the court's pre-trial scheduling scheduling order remains remain in, in effect accordingly by december 4th 2023 the party shall submit any motions then we have all these uh deadlines that needs to be met guys december 4 december 4 december 4 then we see on april 16th council for all uh, for all parties shall appear for a final pre-trial conference in courtroom and then five this is what's interesting here Prior to the final pretrial conference, counsel for both parties along with the parties themselves shall meet in person for at least one hour to discuss settlement of this matter. There you guys go. So the chance it just rose, guys, right? Has risen. Settlement when? There there probably will be settlement, guys. So ordered. Wow, Annalisa Torres right there. Wow, guys. Can't believe it, right? The SEC is most definitely pissed. We then see from Attorney Jeremy, the SEC's motion for interlocutory appeal denied, which means the case uh, either goes to trial in April or goes away. And this order shall allow the judge to explain parts of her ruling even better, making appeal that much harder for the SEC to win. Right, so the SEC is going against a strong current as we speak, guys, right? It's, I don't know about the SEC's plan. Maybe this is why they're attacking other crypto companies. I think that's, that's what it is, guys. So this is funny actually, because the SEC knew they were going to lose against Ripple and XRP 100%. This is why they went after Coinbase and Binance, guys. Right now they have they actually have a fight, fighting chance against Binance. I don't know about t so much about Coinbase, but do you guys see the game plan? Disaster for the agency. Wow. And you guys can read all this stuff if you guys do wish to, guys. If you go down here though. I also, I like how the judge here clarifies her holding at the same time reminding the SEC that speculating in a commodity alone does not meet the test, but that you also must rely on the efforts of others which the SEC failed to prove. The court also concluded that although the record may have demonstrated that many programmatic buyers purchase XRP with an expectation of profit, the SEC failed to provide evidence that such programmatic buyers 
speculative motive derived from efforts of others. Wow. Interesting. The court's holding did not turn on the fact that Ripple's offers and sales were on crypto asset trading platforms. Judge Torres is getting sick and tired of the SEC's BS. I found something very strange though. Wait a minute. I'm going to explain in just a second. By the way, you can't appeal this as well, right? So what's next though? What are the chances this will lead to a settlement? I don't know, but I think it's fair to say the chances just went up, guys. There we go. So now I found something very strange though. The reason being is because I think, look at this. It's all the way April 23rd, 2024. I think the trial, right? I think it's because they're setting something up for the bull run for XRP's price to explode in such a manner, guys, right? Maybe, maybe actually, maybe in tomorrow's video, we're going to, I'm going to talk about more about what just occurred, the blocks one, and what what it means, right? But Johnny Deaton, John Deaton on the Taurus denial, uh, denial of SEC appeal. Let's listen to John Deaton speak his mind about what just occurred. Was this and what exactly are the implications of her actually denying this? Just came out that she denied it, I believe, on many different counts. They did pretty much didn't win anything. But, John, can you first explain... What was the interlocutory uh, appeal that they were trying to do? Sure, thanks. And you know, this is the news that we expected uh, because, uh, as everybody knows, uh, I've been saying very confidently that she was going to deny it. Um, and an interlocutory appeal is, is just think early appeal. Early is another word and sort of for early normally you wait until the trial is over and then anything that either side thinks was a mistake you take it up on appeal here it's an interlocutory early appeal because there's still a trial of brad garlinghouse and chris larson and whether or not they aided and abetted uh, ripple the company in institutional sales in other words the sec must prove that XRP was so obviously a security to these executives that they were reckless in helping Ripple make institutional sales of XRP to venture capitalists, banks, or whoever. And so normally an interlocutory appeal is only granted when there it's a really a, only an issue of law or there has, there's like this confusion going on. And remember, the SEC kept saying it's a very simple test. There's clarity. How we is the law of the land? Circumstances. Gary Gensler says you just apply the facts of the case to the. But the SEC didn't like the result, so they won the appeal. And a lot of me, and kept saying, "Look, she applied the facts of this case." And so, um, what she ended up doing is she allowed the SEC to file their motion. They filed it, and now she's rejected it summarily. And we're going to have an early case. We're going to go forward with this trial, and when the case is completely over, then you can go up on appeal. But what she did was for XRP was simply say, look, all I did was apply the facts of the case. She even said, and this is what I was uh, telling Charlie Gasparino when he was talking about the Judge Rakin terraform case. decision. She said some XRP holders, no doubt, bought XRP, you know, for speculative reasons, and they may have relied on the efforts of Ripple, but the SEC didn't prove that. And so all I can say is that, look, the majority of first-time purchasers of XRP, they didn't even know Ripple existed as a company. So in a blind case, in this case, programmatic sales of XRP on exchanges are not securities. XRP itself is not a security. And what she did in this decision was solidify it. And I'm telling you, it's untouchable. It cannot be touched. She even said, look, I never said that it's impossible for some crypto token to still be a security when it's bought on an exchange. I've just said that XRP in this case with these facts are not, period. I applied the facts. And when she went through her reasoning, she listed out all the things that she relied on factually because the appellate court, the Second Circuit, would only take an interlocutory appeal if they don't have to evaluate the facts. They only want to say, oh, it's a, a unique question of law, Hold on. a unique question of law. And here she went into. One of the on is 
clearly the affidavits that XRP Hold submitted. So again, XRP holders played a role. Everyone that participated should be proud of themselves. We kicked the SEC's ass. Again. So I wonder why couldn't he have done this on? There we go, guys. Things look really good for XRP. It has the green light and Ripple, guys. Right, the SEC is most definitely pissed. By my count, the SEC got an F on their interlocutory appeal. The judge shot down every one of their arguments and prepared the word fail 10 times in her 14-page ruling. You can't make that stuff up, guys. 10 times in the document. New, I asked Johnny Deason what, what his initial reaction was to judge... Uh, judge towards his ruling. He told me she made clear that her decision was about XRP in this case, and some she made it even clearer that excluding Bitcoin, XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity. I don't know about any other coin out there, but even CoinDesk came out with their article right here that the SEC had failed to meet its burden under the law to show that there were that they were controlling questions of law, or that there are substantial grounds for, for differences of opinion. There you guys go. I will leave some of uh, these the links I'm sure those guys will skip further. But footnote five. Wow, Judge Torres is really taking the SEC to school on the Howey test. Consider, for example, a pro uh, programmatic buyer who, while bo uh, browsing on a digital asset exchange, sees the price of XRP dramatically increase, but is unaware of Ripple's existence. If the buyer then purchases XRP from the exchange with the intention of later selling XRP for a profit. She would have purchased XRP with an ex expectation of profit, but that motive was not derived from the, uh, from the efforts of others. Wow, guys! Right, so basically, the judge is now schooling Gary Genzer and the SEC about the whole crypto sphere. But I don't know about any other cryptos, guys. The other cryptos will probably bite the dust, but XRP won't because it has the green light. Judge Torres shreds the SEC argument that there is substantial ground for a difference of opinion. No, it's not like the Terraform case, and no, it's not like the Library case. The Ripple case and XRP are, legal, uh, are legally unique, guys. There you guys go. There is a difference, as we just seen. Now, about the other cryptos, I don't know, right? XRP is the only crypto with clarity, guys. Legal clarity. The court held... That based on the totality of the circumstances in this case, including an, exa an examination of the facts, circumstances, and economic realities of the transactions, Ripple's uh, programmatic sales could not lead investors to reasonably expect profits from Ripple's efforts. There we go. And guys, the SEC's butt caught in the web of their own lies, right? <laughs> well, well, since the SEC is losing to Ripple and XRP, they're going to go after every other coin or com crypto company out there. Let just be prepared. Judge Torres is being crystal clear on why sales of XRP on the secondary market are, are not securities. I'm not going to read all this, but you guys can. Um, I sense that she has had more, th more than enough of the SEC's games, guys. Right, exactly. There you guys go. At the end, guys, this whole case is a waste of time. Just give X... I mean, XRP already has his green light, but give Ripple the green light, guys. Um, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. And then things are set, right? At that point in time, all the, all well again the trial what twenty twenty four setting up for before maybe the collapse I don't know guys things seem interesting I will leave all the links I'm sure so you guys can investigate further not financial advice but things look clear good things on the horizon at the end of the day good events maybe I don't know we'll have to wait and see not financial advice but it was nice to see you.